Welcome back to 90 Seconds Plus with Invercargill City Mayor Nobby Clark. It's a great day here in Invercargill today and um, Nobby, tell us all about a few things. We'll kick off with uh, Rugby Park. Now, you've sort of pitched, uh, we'll put it out there, uh, do we leave the status quo, do we spend, was it four point something million dollars uh, strengthening it, or do we think again and uh, look at something a bit smaller, downsize it? What's your take? Uh, I've not said any of that, Michael. <laughs> So, you know, not be, it for the, not be it for the media to be distorting what I've said. Okay. What I have said to the union is, if we are going to put money into re-strengthening the building, yeah. and given that I can't see any multi-purpose need, because that's what it was meant to be for, yeah. under the Places and Spaces report that came out about three years ago, it would be a multifunctional world. Who else is going to use it other than rugby? Yeah. Potentially rugby league for a couple of games. Club rugby doesn't seem to be interested. Mm. They want to play at their own clubs. Soccer's definitely not interested. Hockey won't go there. Cricket won't go there. Pipe bands once in a blue moon. Marching. Um, well, marching once in a blue moon. So we are still focused on it being a rugby venue. The issue then becomes, sh before we actually do next year, the strengthening that we're required to do, it was just a courtesy call to the rugby union to say, are you sure this is where you want to be in the next 10 to 15 years? Yeah. Because at the moment, the rugby union offices, which is where the staff um, live every day, is not at Rugby Park. It's back out somewhere else. And we pay for that. Yeah, that's true. That's so nice. so you know, that was the thing. If you want Rugby Park, that's fine. We'll re-strengthen it, which is what the status quo is. But we will expect your staff to go back into that premises and we're not paying for it somewhere else. We can't sort of double dip on that. So I'm just going to have a quiet discussion with the chair and with the chief executive next week yeah. but of course that's got out now yeah. and there's a whole lot of rhetoric about you know should we move should we not move you know, you're taking away our our old traditional building well that's okay um, for people to have that opinion but at the end of the day the decision's already been made to stay there mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that's what the rugby want because it's three or four years since we made that decision so what are the rate payers do they get input on this or have they've already had input right input. Yep. okay and two here is one that Places and Spaces report came out, so it talked about sports venues right across and recreational right across our district, but we've had the long-term plan. So that's where the consultation comes in. They get a chance to input every year into our annual plans, and we keep pushing Rugby Park upgrade further away because we've had some other big projects. So it comes up next year and potentially part of the following year, so I just want to make sure we've got this right before we invest. And, and let's see what they have to say, and if they say, yeah, we're happy with what you forecast three years ago, that's great, that's where we go. Yeah. If they say no, then I'll bring it back to council and we'll have another think about it. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on the four and a half day work week or you know, shorter week for obviously council staff? Yeah. Well, I just floated and yeah. only floated. Yeah. Half of my councillors won't even heard the message yet yeah. about, you know, what happened in COVID? A lot of people work from home, not just here, but from other businesses as well. Yeah. We had no idea how much they had for smoker for lunch breaks where they picked the kids up and did some more work in the evening, yes. it made no difference. Yes. What we focused on in COVID time was the quality of the work they did. Yes. And that's got nothing to do with the time or a time clock. Mm -hmm. So the old way of doing business um, is to clock in at eight, yes. smoke a break, an hour for lunch, another smoke a break and go home at five yes. or 4.30 or whatever. Um, that's an old way of doing business. And I think that the, the door could be open for us to have a better working conditions for our current staff and potentially give us some advantage when we recruit against other councils that we struggle with at the moment. So we seem to be at the wrong end of the country, our building's not all that flash to work in, and so uh, and we've got about 40 or 50 vacancies, or 40 I think, so we, we, we struggle to get new staff and that could be a creative way of doing it. I've seen some of the research that's been done, predominantly in the private sector, but some government agencies have gone to working from home or alternatively to a shortened working week. So what it basically means is that you can, can you do your 40 hours current work in 10% less time, yeah. which will give you a half day off. So that means you could have a morning or an afternoon off during the week. Now it doesn't mean that you, everybody goes home at 12 o'clock on Friday because the business couldn't cope with that. Yeah. So you spread it around, there could be some flexibility in there. Now look, you couldn't run that at the swimming pools because you have to have a number of lifeguards there. Yeah. Parks, potentially, a bit of a struggle as well. Library, could operate that way, I think. Yeah. Certainly internally in this building, I think you could do that. Yeah. Reception units have to be manned certain hours, but you've got flexibility with staff that can cover. Yeah. Um, and people might think, actually, I don't mind having a half day off, I'll work a bit harder. Now, the flip side of that argument is all the trolls are going to say, well, if they can do it in 36 hours now, yeah. 
why aren't they doing it now? Yes. Why are you paying for 40 hours or five days salary for four and a half days work? That will be the issue. Yep. But the bottom line is I know that people will work harder if they know they get some time off. If I can sit around here and work really hard and not, not take interruptions, and there are lots of interruptions in this, in this building, yep. and instead of going to smoke for 10 minutes a quarter an hour, I can stretch it out to 20 minutes and 25 minutes, and the same with lunch breaks, there's a lot of dead time in an organisation. Yep. Flip side of that is you don't want people working at a million miles an hour because that's stressful. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get a balance. But the home work balance is something that's key for people, especially, and I'll get in trouble for saying this, but I'll say it anyway, especially for working women that have uh, obligations to children. children that's right. Now, yep. I know everybody's going to jump down my throat for saying that, but the realism is in most families, mum is the primary caregiver. Yep. And so if that helps mum while the kids at school have some time off where she can go and do groceries and others. And I know the feminists will say, well, you know, um, men should be doing the groceries. But the realism is, yeah. you ask most women, yeah. they have a disproportionate share of home life. Yeah. And that would help lighten that load. Or it might allow them to go out and do something, go to the movies on, yeah. on a weekday or whatever. Um, I just think that's something that we should consider. Haven't put anything up formal yeah. yet. Yeah. Just float it out there, see what the response is. I've had from both sides of the fence. Some say it can't be done. Yeah. Give you 10 reasons why it can't, and some of those are internal. Yeah. Um, but the flip side saying, actually, that's quite a creative thing yeah. to be thinking. And you could try it for a year, and if it doesn't work, you go back to 40 hours for the same pay. Exactly. It doesn't cost us any more money than what we're paying them now. Yep. but it gives them a bit more time off. Yeah, hopefully they'll uh, just lift uh, productivity, you know, um, or an increase in productivity, well, mate, or improve productivity. No, it no? doesn't. No. If, you go to, if you go to productivity, what you're saying is we can get it done quicker and therefore right. cheaper. Right. Now, we're not looking to do that. We're not saying, look, yeah. if you can show us that you can do it in four and a half days as opposed to five, then I'll only pay you four oh, and a half days of your salary. Yeah. And that's what the sceptics would say. Yeah. And instead of putting rates up, what I'm saying is we're going to pay them X amount of dollars for working here to do a chunk of work, be it whatever that is. If they can prove to be efficient and manage their own time without getting stressed and do it in a shorter time, there should be some reward for that. Now, what happens when they're away? Well, we have to we have to have flexible workloads that can cover. So it might be that somebody that might be, a, I don't know, an executive assistant might have to spend part of the part of a working week down on reception, or whatever. Yeah. Well, why would that worry you? It's a good way of interfacing with the community, getting a feel for what's going on. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, yeah. So you start to have multitasking around the place. Yeah. And I yeah, just think that's, that, a, good that's, a, that's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah, and also, it's a good backup. It also, just when there's times are tough with um, illnesses or people off sick and all that, so it's a, again, it's about building the team together. And, uh, oh, look, yeah. look, the people that are opposed will say to you, look, what happens if two other members in a small team are away on the day that this person's having a half day off? Well, you be flexible. Yes. You say to them, look, can you come in? I'll, I'll, I'll give you the extra half day next week so you can have two half days off or yes. a full day. Yes. But you don't have it so the person sits back and says, oh, look, we're busy, busy, busy. I'll build it up till I've got a week's oh, worth yeah. and then yes. take a whole week's off because it becomes an extra annual leave then if you do yeah. that. Yeah. And we don't want that. No, don't know and yet we it. still cover when people go off on annual leave. Yeah. Gotcha. And every time you get to a certain length of service in a lot of organisations, you get an extra week's leave. Yeah. We don't employ anybody extra when the person gets extra long service leave. Oh, yes. We just cover. Yes. So if you can accommodate for an extra week a year, mm -hmm. then why can't you cover half a day? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's some organisations go to a four-day working week and yes. five days. Yes. I, wouldn't I wouldn't suggest that. That would be a step too far at the stage, but yeah. who knows in the future? Yeah. Um, it might be a way of recruiting people from other councils to us. We could lead the country in this or alternatively from the private sector towards us as well. I think actually it's quite good to work for council yeah. as opposed to working for a, a firm, yeah. a private sector firm. So we could poach to the private sector. Most of it goes the other way. They take our staff. Yeah. So, right. Something to think about. It is. Oh, well, truly. Hey, well, that's uh, 90 Seconds Plus with the McCarthy Mayor and Nobby Clark. Until next week, see you later.